ready? It's the round table with me, Robert Bannon. Well, hello. It is Wednesday. That's weird. It's Wednesday and it's the round table. We're here on Wednesday because tomorrow and Friday we are working red carpets, everybody. It's so nice to be here, though. We can't miss a show, miss a moment, miss a second of, of our time together. So happy Happy Wednesday night, everybody. My name is Robert Bannon, and you're watching The Roundtable. We're live every single week with our bonus episodes as well. Make sure if you're watching right now, you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend about us because uh, the more people that watch, the more we get to have great guests and great times together in our crazy, crazy days. You doing all right? Happy Mother's Day to everybody last week. Did you celebrate and enjoy? Yes, here's a picture of me and my mother from Mother's Day. Yep, there we are. And now we've aged, we're grown. That No, that's that's from many a moons ago, obviously. But a happy Mother's Day to my mom who's watching right now. Um, we'll, you'll hear more about my mother. Uh, let's talk about it all, shall we? Here is uh, the infamous Week in Review. So last week, as you know, was Mother's Day. So we celebrated that. But we had a big old weekend. Um, because the Broadway lecture series and stuff that I've created all came to town. So yeah, we had the Broadway lecture series with Carrie Butler over at Stageworks 237. And uh, it was um, uh, a really great time. Carrie is so great. She talks about her time in Les Mis. She talked about her time in Hairspray. She talks about her time in... Um, uh, in Mean Girls and in Beetlejuice and et cetera. She's so sweet and so nice. It was so nice to see like young theater kids get really excited to see Carrie Butler and, and tell her and, and have them sign her their playbills. And it was just really cute. Here's um Carrie with mom and me uh, after the show at the meet and greet. It's so much fun to get to sit and talk and, and have conversations with Broadway artists. And you can come and join us. Uh, our next one is on June 17th. We'll tell you about it in a few minutes. And um, after that, we got invited to the opening of Venus and Venom, where we just so happened to have been promised uh, the chance to sit down with the legend that is Cheetah Rivera. Uh, it was the opening of a, a Medi Spa. And we had such a great time. We had some lemonade refreshers. We, we wrote, looked around the spa. And um, we did get the chance to sit uh, with Cheetah and her daughter, Lisa Mordente, um, and talk about her book, which you'll be seeing in a few minutes. You know, she's 90, 90 years old. And after the interview was over, she signed my book and said, Robert, you've got it. And um, she was so sweet and kind. I adore her. Um, a legend, three-time Tony winning legend for sure. So we'll be, she'll be out here in a few moments. Yeah, it's a cute one, right? It's a cute picture. Hi, Darius. Uh, the Rose and the Roberts of them all. So, um, we are really uh, going to have a great a great time with that interview, and then I get to talk to the acupuncturist and the owners of the Medi Spa, and I show them. I say, like, D what do you think of these lines? What do you think of these crow's feet? Do you think we could fix these? What do you think about a little something here? How about a little something there? You know, these ring lights are, are terrible for people who are egotist. These are my old glasses that the dog ate. That's another story. But they don't glare. <laughs> I am ADD squirrel where stay focused, Robert. How about I do a shameless plug? How does that sound good? I have news. I have, I have news about pride. So can we get to it? Let's get to it. Cause I'm shameless. Well, as you know, uh, June is fast approaching, otherwise known as my busy, it's busy season. It's busy season for sure. So busy season is on its way. And uh, here's the June event itinerary, which is brand new off the off the charts. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a Pride Tour 2023. We are going to be, it's calling Loud and Proud. And June 2nd um, is my show at 54 Below. We'll talk about that more in a minute. And June 4th, I'm seeing the National Anthem at Pride Night for the New Jersey, New York Gotham Pride uh, soccer team at the Red Bull Stadium. June 7th, me and Margaret Joseph, so the Real Housewives of New Jersey. What a mess that was last night. Uh, we'll be in Englewood. And then I am coming out to Motor City Pride June 10th. June 10th, Saturday night at Motor City Pride. You need to come to the Pyramid Stage. If you're in Detroit, come see me. I can't wait to perform a great mix of music for you. And uh, Motor City Pride is one of the premier prides uh, in this entire country. They know how to throw a party. Allegedly, I'm, I'm going on the 11th 
to Washington, D.C. We have to just get final confirmation of the time and if that's possible. And then I'll be in Boot and Pride on the on the 17th in Jersey. I have my Broadway lecture series that same day with Eden Espinosa, Popped in Lakes, Pride. And then I'll be doing the national anthems for the New York Red Bulls, also at Red Bull Stadium. So that and more to come, uh, I am sure. I'm super excited about Pride. Pride is always a busy, exciting time. And I'll be out marching and yakking my little self all over the place. Hi, how are you, Christine? Thank you. So if you're in Detroit, make sure you come to Motor City Pride and check me out. If you're in Jersey, make sure you come to Pride and uh, be a part of it all. But if you're in New York or New Jersey on June 2nd, you need to get your little self over to 54 Below June 2nd at 930. As Christine said, it's two weeks and two days away. Two weeks and two days away, we've had rehearsal, we have guests, we have a uh, press, we have interviews, and we have band, we have background singers for this. And if you use the code BANNON5, you can get $5 off. You can get all that information at, at 54below.com, or you can go to robertbannon.com and get, check it all out. Uh, we had some fun press this week. I want to thank um, the bo boy culture for running this uh, ad here. Um, yes, we are singing Whitney and Elton, and um, so it, it, it should be fun. And then this was a great, the Broadway blog, New Jersey may be the butt of many jokes, but as Garden State native Robert Bannon knows all too well, its proximity acts as the entrance to New York, Jersey, then also affords a scrappiness, a deep love of the quirky and strong feelings about the infamous housewives. All of these ingredients get thrown into a blender and served as a rainbow smoothie. In his upcoming 54 Below concert, Robert Bannon's Pride Playlist, the June 2nd event promises gags, divas aplenty, and artists share. Uh, I shared with the Broadway blog what audience can expect. It's a great article if you Google it. It was very fun questions that he asked me about my favorite housewives and all that stuff. So check it out. It's always love, uh, I love being able to talk and, and chat about what's coming, coming up. As Christine, two weeks, two days. Me, stage, brand new show. No songs are repeat. Mm, mm -mm. There's a little bit from Rewind, and there's a and one song from my album. Um, of course, I think he knew is my signature song, but it's an all new show, all brand new. Creole Lady, <laughs> you you should come to the pre show, everybody. It's on you Instagram at six thirty, and it is a hot hot mess express for sure. All righty, uh, and then the next Broadway lecture series is coming up. On June 17th, like I said, Eden Espinosa is the star of Wicked, Brooklyn, Rent. She is um, a, a talent like there is no other. If you want to get tickets, go to go to stageworksnj.org. We'll be hosting it on June 17th, the day before Father's Day. And I'm really excited to talk to her. She's my friend and she's wonderful. Yeah. So, oh my goodness, there's so much so many great events, so lucky, so grateful to be able to spend my time with you. Wait till you see the Pride lineup we have for this show. Wait till you see who's going to be dropping by the round table every single week. Wait till you see what's coming up next week while we celebrate the Tony Awards, which are going to happen. So we have um, some of the stars of Some Like It Hot. We have some of the stars of uh, the lighting designer who's nominated for Camelot. We have more guests coming. We have a special round tables this week. So just stay tuned, click and subscribe and, and follow us along for everything that we do. Cause we have a lot, a lot of content coming up, a lot of interviews. Uh, here's my Hey Friend Hey. I'll be there for you. How you doing? <laughs> the reason we can't do uh, the show tomorrow is because I'll be on the red carpet. Mike will be manning the camera tomorrow as we go to the premiere of The Fears a new play uh, pr produced by Steven Soderbergh. Steven Soderbergh is a Oscar-winning director. He directed Aaron Malkovich. He directed Traffic. He directed um, Magic Mike. <laughs> he directed Sex, Lies, and Videotapes. He directed, uh, uh, did I say Ocean's 11, Ocean's 12, Ocean's 13, 14, 15, 16. Well, he has a brand new show coming out. So tomorrow I'll be on the red carpet. A lot of stars will be there. Sigourney Weaver will be there. Tay Leone will be there. Um, Deborah Messing will be there. So stay tuned for that. And then on Friday, a lot of our friends that have been on this show will be walking the red carpet at the Drama League Awards. And I will be on the carpet of the Drama League Awards. And I'm so honored and excited. Andre DeShields is getting the Lifetime Achievement. Lynn manuel Miranda is being honored as well. And um, 
there's stars from Josh Groban to Sarah Bareilles to the marvelous Miss Maisel's Rachel Brosnahan to Oscar Isaac from the Star Wars. There's going to be so many people there, and I can't wait to chat with as many people as we can on Friday. So make sure you stay tuned for all of that great content that is on its way. On its way. You can snap. You got it. I see you. All right. Shall we get <laughs> Shall we get to You can't let me teach all day and then do this. I'm trying to think do I have anything else to say? No. I'm excited. I'm excited, really really excited. We had a great time over with our friends over at um Venus and Venom and uh and Miss Rivera and Miss Mordente and I'm nervous to watch this cuz it's watching myself. It's really fun. I hope I didn't make a fool of myself. Cheetah Rivera's here. We are coming to you today from Nanuet, right? Nanuet. Nanuet, New York. It's just Rockland County, like the Rockland Bakery, like Rockland. That's all I know because I'm a foodie, which is why I need to come here to Venus and Venom because they do all of the day spa things, like the medical stuff with the beauty stuff. So like Botox, cool sculpting acupuncture, facials, massages, something to get rid of this. And Cheetah, the one and only three-time Tony winning Cheetah Rivera, the original the original Anita in West Side Story, and she's the kiss of the Spider Woman. And she was in Chicago with Gwen Verdon, and she has done ever, nine with Antonio Banderas. And we saw her the other week, and we told her we were going to see her here. So we stalked her, and she's here. And we are going to talk about her memoir, and she's going to sign a copy of it for me because I'm going to make her. And that is what we're here. We're going to tell you all about what's going on. And if you live in this area, hello, and you need a little pick-me-up, like my crow's feet and my wrinkles, because my mother says I don't wear enough sunblock, then you need to get yourself right here. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight and seeing our new space. As many of you know, we went through a lot of changes and transformation. We took a lot of time to reimagine and remodel this spa. And we're proud to showcase all of our hard work tonight. Okay. All right. Yeah! Tequila. Yes. Tequila. Yes. Tequila. 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 Lisa Mordente can dance and sing her face off. That's right. Well, she has pretty talented parents. Yeah. I kind of got a little lucky in that manner. You've got pretty lucky parents. When you were writing the book, you start in this chapter. You're at Lenny's apartment, Leonard Bernstein's apartment, across from Carnegie Hall, just going over the music. You write it like it was just another day in your life. Well, it was. It was a, just another day in my life, and but it was a big one. Yes, it was a big one, and I, I acknowledged it, but then I got down to business. And you sure did. Yeah, you yeah. sure did. Yeah. What was it when she was going through the process of writing the book? How did you feel about hearing the story about your mom? And she tells some tea, and she gives a, <laughs> she gives a little tea even about you. She does. Yes, she does. Yes. And I just kind of go, uh -huh, okay, I'm gonna go in the other room. Now. <laughs> uh, write what you need to write. And we'll just go over here. How, when I saw you at the premiere of New York, New York, you talked about Fred and and John Can Kander and Ebb, and you got a little misty talking about him and his music being alive. Your work with them, when you think Fosse, when you think Kander and Ebb, you think Cheetah Rivera. What what is it like to go back and think of those memories, Chicago and Gwen and and Kiss of a Spider Woman and all you did. Well, it, it just reminds me about how lucky I am, how lucky I am. And that's why I wrote the book, so that it almost was uh, um, t entitled, um, You Can Too, You Can Too. 
because if dancers dedicate themselves or whatever singer actor if they if you just dedicate yourself to what you want to do and do not miss anybody that comes across your path you don't dismiss that because there are lessons to be learned and and keep an open mind and be ready be ready and you prove that and your work i was so inspired by the story your car accident story and then not knowing if you were going to get up and be able to dance again and then to be back well i i, I knew i knew that i would she always somehow. knew that she would get up again yeah. i mean i would have been really surprised if i had only because Mr. Obukov, Miss Jones, I was taught just keep going straight ahead, you know. And so I would have been surprised if I hadn't. The stories about your ballet teachers in the beginning, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and how strict and the different demeanor and oh, attitude yeah. that they had. What a foundation! And then you yeah. took all of that and created all these iconic different styles. But is the foundation of that what you used all of these years? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we don't want to lose, is right. the foundation that Mama grew up with, that she inserted me into. You know, I had my Anna Giselka ballet, right? I'm 4'11", yeah. as if I'm going to be in the court of ballet. But, <laughs> but you never know. You never know. And it was the best foundation for me and Joe Tremaine. Oh, the yeah. best, best, best. So the foundation is important. If you're an aspiring singer, performer, dancer, you need you need to get the book is and it's just a, a story of humanity and perseverance well I, i'm awfully glad you didn't miss that uh, yes yeah because it it's a story about humanity everybody that you meet is as important as the next person even if it's something someone that is doing something you shouldn't do you learn from that I shouldn't do that, yes. you know. So everybody is a teacher. Oh, yes. oh my yes. goodness! Can I just stay here forever? <laughs> I'm never leaving ever, never. And I'm gonna buy you a drink, and I'm gonna ask you a lot of Sammy Davis Jr. questions uh, that are not in this book because uh, I have questions now. You need to buy the book and find out. <laughs> um, congratulations to everybody here. Our friend. I know Lori. I know Lori Michaels for 106 oh, yeah. years. We grew up together wow. in Fort Lee, and that's the connection. And all roads lead to home. That's right. It sure does. That's so sweet. It's such an honor. I, I'm going to tell Michael Orland. I'm going to tell oh, Lee. I'm going to tell everybody. You know Michael Orland. I sure do Lee. know Michael Orland. I love my Mike. He played for my show in L.A. Stop. And he made me sell, he's going to be so mad if I tell the story, $10. <laughs> I had to collect $10 out of a car because he was Facebook marketplacing a rug. And I said, Michael, you don't need $10. You have all the money. Please, Michael, please. I went into the AT&T store with him once, and I've never been the same. <laughs> it's an honor. Thank an you. Honor. And, and it's an honor, an honor to, to, to have talked to you and for you to have gotten the book, understood it, I loved it. I read it two days, stayed up. Good. I teach fifth grade. I don't need to go to bed. I was staying up. I need to finish the book. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're calling them the co captains. I called them the Venus and Venom of the Venus and Venom. Congratulations on reopening. Thank you so much. Yeah, very exciting. You have a beautiful space. You found, when did you found this and what inspired you to found this idea? Well, being a nurse, I didn't want to keep working in hospitals and I've always had um, a business side of me, a creative side of me. So in 2007, I opened the first RN operated med spa. And here we are three spas later in 2023. I can't believe it's been that long. And here we are. And how did she drag you on into this venture? I, <laughs> we've actually been, been together, friends, since um, nursing school, which was 1999. You say that date. <laughs> 1999. 2009. And so 
um, I've watched her grow. I've watched her develop her skills, and you know, she's been in training me and just keeping me up to date with everything. And when she was like, you know what, I want to expand again, but I need support, and she took no, hands, no and that was it. Support than family. Yeah, right? Absolutely. So, what is the difference between a spa? And a doctor's office where you go to a doctor. What what is how, what what is a medi spa for people who don't know but should like my crow's feet and my wrinkly forehead? So <laughs> uh, a medi a medi spa gives you a lot of what a, a doctor's office would have, and everything a spa would have. We do the facials and the massage, and uh, we have the Botox, we have the fillers, we have the laser hair removal, we have the skin resurfacing, we have all the fun stuff, pool sculpting. I mean, if we don't have it, it's probably just not good. So, <laughs> and as nurses, we um, also are safe, and we have, because we're a medical spa, we keep up on the most recent trainings and the most recent um, ways to perform our procedures. Again, the safest for the patients. Another difference: we train around the world. So we don't just train in the U.S. or just in New York. We've been to Paris. We've been to London. We've been to Canada. We see what's happening everywhere. We bring the trends here because frequently the trends are in Europe. They're at least seven years ahead of us. Canada's ahead of us, too. And so we see everything coming, and we bring it a little bit before it's going to arrive here. You know, I believe in destiny and fate, and I feel like I've been led here. I'm just going to say, like, just get a pen out, and let's just start marking things. <laughs> Have this here, yeah. and a little here, and a little laser hair removal there. Congratulations. You're serving this community, and we all want to feel good and be healthy, and it's so important. And that's what you're doing. When people come here, what do you hope they leave feeling like? Confident. Confident. Absolutely happy, confident. Yeah. And safe. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm so Thank excited so to much. check everything Thank out. You. All right, we're here with Maria. Maria is an acupuncturist. Maria, why is acupuncture scary? Acupuncture is so not scary, Robert. Are you sure? I promise. Don't lie to me, Maria. No, acupuncture is an experience that is, if you've never had it before, you don't know what to expect, so you got to try it okay. and discover that it's not scary. It's actually really relaxing, super therapeutic, and one of the best things that you can do for pain stress and any other chronic ailments you know i've heard that acupuncture it's everyone thinks about it bones or things like that but it helps allergies it helps with people to sleep it helps you just to calm down there are many benefits why do most people come for acupuncture most people come see me for acupuncture because they are in pain and i specialize in sports medicine acupuncture and I do advanced needling techniques that are designed to reduce pain and get people back to living full active lives with like more mobility, less stress, and feeling great all around. Maria, I want to be out of pain with you. <laughs> Just me and you. Yes, Robert. But let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's, if you want to check out acupuncture, you're here. Tell us a little bit. We can call. We can make an appointment. Mm -hmm. We can come see you. How long is the session? A session is typically one hour long. Okay. I'm here at Venus and Venom. My website is aculiving.com. We'll put it right there. A C U L I V I N G dot com, and the website has all of my information. I am so excited to check it out. Thank you so much. Oh, so nice talking That's with you, Robert. So cool. There you go. A little Cheetah Rivera, a little acupuncture, a little Venus and Venom spa action. Yes. Endless respect for Cheetah. She is the best, a legend. You mu I'm not kidding. So the joke about Sammy Davis Jr. In the book, spoiler, she has had a one-year affair with him. She had an affair with Sammy Davis Jr. for a year doing a show on Broadway with him. And her daughter dated Burt Reynolds. And she spills the tea. Oh, I'm eating an apple. That you can only spill when you are 90. Wait till you hear the tea I'm going to spill when I'm 90. Honey, nothing is safe. So my mother was hiding behind a television I turned around. And I'm like, Mom, we're going to go talk to Cheetah. It's our turn. Where is she? 
like if she could crawl under the ground like a gopher, hidden. Mm-hmm. The opposite of a stage mother. I'm so. <laughs> grateful for all the fun and excitement. Don't worry, because I have a stage father. Um, I got to see the play that goes wrong. Thank you to everyone at BBB Way. Me and Mike went and saw it. We and Mike saw the play that goes wrong. We now saw Peter Pan that goes wrong. And we had, see? Thank you, mom. Yep. Hiding behind a ficus. So when you see her at 54 below, Get, take her hand and drag her out there and say, Gitchy, gitchy, ya, ya, mocha, toka, la, ta. And she'll dance. She will. The cast of the Peter Pan Goes Wrong was here. We had three great cast members that I loved Chris, Ellie, and Charlie. And um, I had such a blast talking to them. The show was fun. They all have fun English accents. <laughs> take a peek. All right, so one of my favorite things is to see exciting, fun, new comedies out there on the Broadway. And I love the play that goes wrong. We raved about it with the cast of the play that goes wrong. And when you think of a play that could go tragically, amazingly wrong, is there something more brilliant than Peter Pan? What can possibly go wrong? Well, our next guests are going to tell us everything that could possibly go wrong. They're blowing up the boards right here in the middle of New York City. Welcome to the show, Ellie, Chris, and Charlie. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> how great it is to see you all. You are all brilliant. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You're better. <laughs> no, I, well, I can't do comedic timing like you three can do comedic timing. So you all are. <laughs> um, let's get started talking about it, if you don't mind. Chris, I Ooh. saw you in the Barrymore Theater a half hour before the show starts, wandering around. Don't show up late. Don't miss a moment. No, I can be quite mean. In in it's in a, in a fun way. Did I shout at you, Robert? No, I was upset. You did say Neil Patrick Harris was in the show at the time, and you did say if there was an empty seat that he was expensive. So I need you need to tell your friends. You did tell yeah. me that, <laughs> but you were very polite to me. I was. I, I I've worked with much worse stage managers than that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. So usually before the show, for about half an hour, 20 minutes before the show, me, Henry Shields, who plays the director and Cat Hook, and a few others, I won't give too much away, but we come out and we do this whole pre-show madness where we kind of improvise with the audience and kind of a lot, things start going wrong already. And it's a lot of fun because the audiences that we get here as well, especially in America, they are so up for having fun and playing with us which makes our job really easy. Ellie tries to escape, don't you? I can't, uh, uh, spoilers, she has terrible stage fright. Um, and so yeah, one of the pre-show things is, is Lucy racing through the auditorium trying to help. Sometimes, I Sometimes you get up, she, she really makes me work hard to catch her. It's very impressive. <laughs> one day I will not do the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep running. <laughs> well, so yes, Ellie, is over there. I'm happy to see you standing, able to stand and not in a, I can't give it, I'm going to give so much away to, to the show. Uh, and I don't want to give it away. Well, but you, need to, anyway, you, need, you need to go see it. Everybody go see the show. And yes. And Charlie, you have a lot of fun. I mean, you would talk about a crazy arc and a lot of fun, nutty, scary moments in the show. What has it been like to open this here in America and to, to do this here on Broadway? It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to do it here in the States. I think uh, the audiences in America seem to really um, enjoy the kind of fairy tale element of the show, the fact that there's a love story, a bit more pathos, mm. and they really respond to that. Um, love the underdog and they really support. There's a character called Maxit, uh, played by Matt Cavendish, who's amazing. Um, it's just been an absolute joy. It's one of my favorite shows to do because of all the goes wrong shows, it has probably uh, maybe the most heart to it. Mm. Um, and also we've talked about how it feels like a real ensemble show where the whole cast like connects with each other even in tiny moments. You'll find that maybe it'll be so small, but if you watched it a few times, you might see like different mm. looks between mm -hmm. people. And so I think that's one of the reasons why I like doing it so much. <laughs> 
I think it's quite like, cause as you were saying, the underdog story over in America, that reaction compared to the UK is we usually quite like laughing at the underdogs. And, <laughs> but over here, you guys fully back them and you want them to succeed with like Lucy, who Ellie plays, uh, Max, who Matt Cavendish plays. So there's quite, that's really charming to be around because you can hear the old cheer. They really get behind them. So oh. I went, oh, hello, John. Hello. Hello. You've just sorry. One of the actors has come to get a cookie. <laughs> there, look there. And writer. And he's, like, he's like, he's going. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't come back. Don't Goes come wrong. Yeah, go away. It's natural to us. We love you. He's <laughs> a cookie. Well, you all have done plays that go the play that goes wrong. You all, I, I guess, have worked together. I love this. We're the whole cast is going to show up here because you have the cookies. That's <laughs> Hungry actors, man. They don't do their time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, did you all study at the same place? How did you all find your way into the series of the play that goes wrong? Uh, yeah, we all went to uh, Lambda, which is a drama school in London. Um, so we were all in, you guys were in the same year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were in the same year. I was in a year below or a couple of years below, but we all kind of met at, at that drama school and Mischief was kind of established there. Um, we all joined at different times. You guys were doing the Mischief Movie Night improv show. Well, it was called something else back then. Um, but I joined doing kind of through improv. Um, I started doing that kind of show with these guys. And then, yeah, just yeah. kept kept working for them. Yeah, it started in 2008 um, with a small group of people who'd done the foundation course. I think I joined like a couple of months later. And for a while, it was quite a little bit of a smaller group doing improv in the Edinburgh Fringe. And then it grew and grew and grew. The more we did improv or the more we wanted to cast like incredible people, um, we knew who to go to because we'd trained or practiced or rehearsed with all these people. And um, yeah, and every, everyone's, you've even done productions of the play that goes wrong, even though might be the original cast, like they've all done it. And then both Chris and Ellie have appeared in the Goes Wrong show. They're in the Goes Wrong show um, as well. So it sort of grows, their family grows and grows. And it's amazing. Just you just got to make friends with the right people, Robert, and then <laughs> be, be nice yeah. to everyone in case yeah. they're successful. So they <laughs> along with. <laughs> I just I just wanted more friends. That's it. That's mm -hmm. exactly it. It's nothing to do with our, our limited talent. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny because when I walked into my first after college, my first vocal lesson, I spoke to the person who was a vocal teacher, and he said you're going to acting school, be really good friends with everyone because one of them is going to write a play or a pilot and they're going to cast you from your class. So you better be nice. It's there you go. very, <laughs> it's very true. Yeah. I think kind of in everything actually in acting, not just within mischief, everything in the world, be, like, be nice to every single person you yeah. work with mm -hmm. um, because that's why you get asked back because yeah. you're a nice pleasant person to be around. You can it's have, nothing to do with talent. It's not it's, to do. It's, you can have boundaries. You have perfectly appropriate boundaries where you take care of yourself, mm -hmm. but yeah, like just be nice and friendly, and and you'll find that you go, we all go a bit further because you then you just want to hang out with each other even more, don't you? Yeah, and I think that's the charm of kind of like what we do with with mischief anyway, which is it's we all know each other so well because we've known each other for like fifteen years or whatever it's been that on stage we have the ability to be able to play and change things up because we know each other inside out, mm -hmm. you know. Well, yeah, you have to... Go ahead. Oh, no. I was just going to say, especially with, like, the physical stuff, like, my character, again, spoilers, gets hurt a lot. And if I didn't really trust everyone around me to kind of catch me and, like, make sure I'm actually getting injured, it would be so much more difficult. But it's amazing. I literally can just, like, you know, fall down around, jump into people's arms, and I'm always going to get caught. So yeah, that's, that's lovely. True. You read my mind because that's what I was just going to ask you. You have to have a lot of trust on stage because Ellie is thrown and things are falling. Scared the bejesus out of me. I jumped. I literally show things happen. Um, what is it like? How important is it, Ellie? I'll start with you, and then we could go down the line. How important is it to really trust and work well with this ensemble that you know that they have your back, expect safety and and entertainment and emotionally the whole gamut. I think, yeah, it's, it's incredibly important. It is like the kind of crux of the show because if we didn't trust each other, if we weren't able to do those incredibly tense physical sequences with each other, then everything would fall apart. So I think that really is like a complete key component to making this show work mm -hmm. is just having that level of like comfort and trust. Yeah, I would, yeah. And I, would, I think that it requires a bit of discipline. I think it can be 
slightly uh, a, a mistake to think that because it's a comedy, uh, we're all just messing around mm -hmm. and that if it goes wrong, it doesn't matter because it's a goes wrong show. Well, actually, it's sort of the opposite. It's sort of really, really carefully choreographed chaos that requires quite a bit of discipline because yeah. if, for example, I've started to do a bit more or mess around, then people are going to get hurt by things mm -hmm. because we're not paying attention. Um, so yeah, it's about respecting each other and respecting the work. And once you've got a really solid foundation of that, then you get to have fun and play because you know the parameters that you need to stick to. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with everything they said really. The only thing I have on top of that to add is that I think, especially in slapstick farces, things are going to go wrong. For whatever reason, it's such a technical heavy show that mistakes are gonna happen. Oh, yeah. um, and I think knowing each other so well, it's amazing being on stage. It's a privilege being on stage with someone that you can tell in their eyes when something has gone wrong that you may not have noticed. And you look in their eyes and you're like instantly like, okay, they're not happy. So you know it, which is a really nice feeling because you're comfortable because we can all read each other instantly and you can find a way together how to get out of that problem. That's so true. You know yeah. the face. You know the face, which is not like, oh, we're in the plane. It's going wrong. You know the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which is wrong. which is <laughs> which is nice because it means that you don't have to, you know, even though something necessarily perfectly to plan that evening, we as an ensemble can find a way that that show's still special for that audience and they're still getting a great show. We just find a different way of showing that. To them. So the play, the Peter Pan goes wrong. Sometimes does go wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, yeah. Ac accidents are gonna happen. Like I just said the wrong line today at one point. Just you said did? the wrong <laughs> line, and I just I was so disappointed in myself. It was and great. I you covered it very well. I did. I think well. I said Jesus. <laughs> but the point was, I had to. Something I've learned from everyone, but particularly Matt Cavendish, he's very good at being like, "It's fine. Don't continue to beat yourself up over it." You mm. have to let yeah, it go. Like yeah. you didn't do that because you were messing around and being an, a, a, an, idiot, an idiot. I was about to swear. Um, <laughs> I caught myself. But uh, you just got to be like, right, I messed up. Own it. Apologize, and then let it go. Because otherwise, it's going to make you mess up again. Oh, yeah. Because you're, you're thinking of you mess up again and again. Yeah, and again. Yeah. No, but you you all are are so pros because I, being there and the, the first act went on and I thought, wow. They're great, and I'm tired for them because they do this eight shows a week. By the end of the second act, I thought to myself, "You have to do this again tomorrow. You have to do this again tonight. What What is it like to take care of yourself physically? You are literally running around a 360 stage for two hours. What do you do? Um, what What do you do, Chris, to to get to keep yourself?" physically and in, in shape that you're able to do the show eight shows a week and then we'll go down the line i think it's kind of i think it's natural that like also we've been doing this show for like nine years on and off so it's we've done this show many a time which comes with its own problems as well because you sometimes sit there going i know this so well how do i keep this fresh so mm -hmm. that becomes its own challenge and i think actually we're all very good at that and the thing that we do is that if a thing we've recently done that I really enjoy is sometimes if we're feeling like a bit tired, we actually improvise backstage and we will do the whole show in character. So even backstage, the audience can't see us, but we're doing it in character. And that's really nice because it reminds us what the show originally is, mm. which sometimes when you've done it so many times, you sometimes forget what that is. Um, yeah. So keeping it fresh for ourselves is, I think, really important. Um, so uh, and having juice that's, <laughs> like, that's the first juice you've ever had that is the first <laughs> juice I've ever had and I've only had it for you yeah. just to impress you and because they're sponsoring me no. <laughs> I get that um, I, um, I have had to be have had to have like a word with myself sometimes well because as an actor like particularly visiting actor to New York the temptation is oh I want to like do everything and go out every night and, and meet all these new people all the time mm. absolutely like we do that but it has to be in balance mm. and for example last week I was just I got too tired and so I have to be a bit boring and go home and go to bed and eat really good food and and do pilates and 
have a walk mm. because you have to remember why like you're being here to, you're being paid to do a show not to go on holiday yeah 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 so just be a bit grown up <laughs> <laughs> and how about yeah, you I, I my track it's it's not the most physically intense i mean it, it i mean it is but it isn't. I think I have short bursts of activity. So I do actually get quite a nice balance of off stage to recover and then out again to do something intense and then come back. So I find the balance is, is okay. Um, it's, it gets hot. I have to say that. Yeah. We're all wrapped up in these woolen costumes, which are amazing, but wow. Mm. Very, it's, it's twisty in there. Mm. Um, so yeah, like put, constantly like putting ice packs on my face um, <laughs> to drink lots, of drink lots of water. But yeah, it's, um, it's, it's great. I think also there is a kind of like mind of a matter thing. I hate to say that, it sounds so weird, but when we were younger, I think we used to make those mistakes. Mm. But now you're older, when yes. we made those mistakes when we were younger doing the shows, that's when accidents did happen. And then you suddenly realize you're like, that's your responsibility. I was too tired, I wasn't focused. So then I hurt myself. Where, so when you get older, you, um, you've done it as much as we have doing this show, I, I, you find that there's a moment where you're tired, you know the consequences of that, so your body just does not let you do it. It's like, no, the next two hours or two and a half hours, like, you're on it. Yeah, focus. You're very focused, you know? Yeah. I always find there's that point of, like, if, it, if I can't do anything during the day and I can't speak to another person and I just have to sit eat my food and then go on and do the show, yeah. at least I will be able to do those two hours of the show. Mm -hmm. And then if it ever affected the actual show, obviously that's very different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you kind of always have enough to do it, but then you realize, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you look at the pictures that you're all making, I mean, you have it's a beautiful production. As you said, the hot costumes are maybe hot, but they're really fun to watch from the audience. Oh. It is such a beautifully staged, sh I could get all actory nerdy, but it's really beautifully staged and it's so brilliantly woven together. You are walking such a beautiful fine dance up there every single night. And it's just a joy. Comedy comes on ideas and there is an idea every two seconds in this show, just flying in from all over the place. When this run is over and you go back home, what do you hope that the audiences here in the United States take away from this show and that they, and, and what do you hope you are providing for everyone that comes through the Barrymore every single night? I, I think just, it's so joyful. It's just a really, really good time. It, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It does not, you don't have to think too hard about anything. It's just off uh, and whatever that release does uh, for anyone, which is I think really important. Um, in these times that we're in, yes. um, have a release to have love and to allow yourself to have a good time mm. and to feel some joy. Yeah, Ellie said it and we give you permission to laugh at us. We're like, yeah. here is our gift to you. <laughs> you have two hours where you can laugh at us and we want you to. Yes. We're not at you. Like the audience win and mm. it's not edgy or political. There, and that there's space for all that work and it's really important. But if you, it, we're also providing something else which might be two hours off, actually. <laughs> I think to add on top of that, well, is I think the Cornley characters that we play, playing the Peter Pan character, you look at the story of Cornley, their whole thing is that they're trying their hardest to do something that's really tough. They fail quite a lot, but then at the end, they all, um, is giving them a bit away, but at the end they come together as a group, this squad from different walks of life come together because they're a family and they love each other and they get through it. And I think that's a beautiful message as well, mm, yeah. is that you can just come together and you can kind of get through anything. Yeah, and it's okay to fail. Yeah. 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 I fail all the time. So who is? <laughs> <laughs> When so everybody listen, you can go the Ethel Barrymore Theater right now for tickets. Go to Peter Pan Goes Wrong B Way right now. You're gonna want to catch the, there. They come on. I love I love yeah. an brilliant improv actors that, that play the game here with me. Um, if you want to see the show, you're gonna definitely want to check it out. Get your tickets. Get your it's a great night for ages all young and old, and it's fun. And if you're a fan of Peter Pan, if you're a fan of comedy, if you're a fan of just a night out and leave your job and all your stress away, come see these knuckleheads make a fool of themselves and have a lot of fun. Enjoy. <laughs> and if you have a kid, 
if you have a kid who loves Peter Pan, the, mm. let, yeah. bring it, let them see and young theater actors and, and performers and students that want to know how to do it right here. They make it look easy. You all are so great. I hope you have the most amazing run. Have so much fun in New York. Drink lots of juice and go out and club all the time. But then you'll have to go to sleep. Yeah, Indeed. That's, that's what we've learned tonight. Balance. Oh, thank you so, so much. <laughs> Congratulations. So much love and have the best run. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank, thank you for having, having us. How sweet are they? Aren't they sweet? They're such nice people. And they're really funny in the show. They're really great in the show. I saw with my friend Mike. <clears throat> so much good theater. You know, no matter where you live, if you're in Los Angeles, if you're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, if you're in Detroit, Michigan, if you're in Boston, Massachusetts, if you're in Pensacola, Florida, no matter where you are, you absolutely, um, you know, can see some great art. You could see a singer performing at a local bar or pub or in a park this summer. You can see a local community theater production of a play. You can see a movie. You can just, or go to Broadway or go to see a show of 54 Below like mine. You can always see and support art and artists. That's what this show was all about. Um, thank you, Christine. I was having fun with this one for sure. And the red carpet will be fun. And then Saturday next week, I can't say this out loud because I'm taking days off of work, but I'm taking a, I'm out of here for three days. So I will be a little off the grid before I come back and buckle down and get ready for 54 below and pride. So I'm taking a little vacation. So I promise you I will, but we're going to jam in these next two days and have a lot of fun. Everybody, uh, there's more joy than there's sadness. There's more love than there is hate. And uh, I sure have a lot of love for you. And I appreciate you always being here and supporting this little messy, messy, messy show. Next week, we sh we're talking about the Tony Awards. Don't miss it. Uh, until next time, the best is yet to come. God bless you. Good night, everybody. <laughs>